Hi folks, Matt Easton here of Scholar Gladiatoria channel and I have to tell you, um, I'm depressed at the moment. I'm not depressed for any serious reason. I'm not depressed because anything particularly is going wrong in my life or, or you know, my health is fine, my family is fine, um, I've got some money, everything else is fine. What I'm depressed about is British TV productions set during historical periods. Now I know I've complained about the BBC's Musketeers um, leather fetish, for want of a better expression, uh, in the past, and some people have gone, hey Matt, they've gone, you know, it's just a TV show, chill out about it, um, don't worry, it's in the age of Game of Thrones, uh, people want to see a more, you know, a leather clad kind of uh, biker inspired, kind of cool looking, um, kind of sexy looking medieval period or in the case of the Musketeers Renaissance um, and I can understand all of that I can understand the need to to make things more uh, pleasing to the modern eye we don't you know medieval clothes let's face it if we look at historically accurate medieval clothes a lot of the time to a modern person they look pretty stupid um, if you look at 15th century hose as featured in the fencing treatises of Hans Talhofer um, they look pretty. They look pretty stupid. Let's be honest about it. Obviously, in their time, they didn't look stupid, but to us today, they look quite funny. Um, and they essentially they look a bit like spandex leggings with a huge copies. Um, and yeah, I completely accept all of that. However, there are certain there are certain things that you can you can do with any historical program to make it. Um, both give some impression of the historical period and also to, you know, fundamentally um, also kind of look cool at the same time. Now there's two things that have come up recently in the media which are really, really bugging me. The first one, the uh, ITV, ITV channel, um, is soon to come out with a program called Beowulf, obviously based on the story of Beowulf, um, and my god, what I mean, I'm not even going to talk about his leather clothing, but let's just have a look at the sword that he's wielding for a minute. See, the problem with this is uh, not just the kind of 1980s fantasy uh, get-up gear that he's wearing, the, the weird kind of leather stuff with the kind of what the gladiator-inspired thongs hanging in front of his crotch, and what is with all those straps? Man, that is a lot of bondage straps he's got across him. But just ignoring what he's wearing for clothes, what the hell is going on with that sword? So this is Beowulf, yeah? Beowulf, this is set in the Dark Ages. What's he doing with a longsword? Okay, that's the number one. But the second problem is that anybody who's at all familiar with fantasy films is going to go, Oh, wow! They've combined Conan the Barbarian's sword with the pommel of Jon Snow's sword. It's like, come on, guys, use some imagination. Like, that. it's like the worst Photoshop job ever. They've literally copied the shape of Conan's sword and stuck a bunch of wolves on it and stuck a wolf's head pommel on, just like Jon Snow's sword. Incidentally, pointing out sideways, bizarrely, not like most historical swords where the face of the animal will either point forwards or backwards, usually forwards, um, but for some reason on Jon Snow's sword it points sideways and they've just copied that here. This is the laziest form of, of kind of cost, costume design that I've seen in a really long time. Um, the costume is like vomit worthy, I'm not even going to mention that, but the sword, oh my god, um, it, it, this is seriously making me depressed. Um, like please maybe have a sword that looks a bit like a dark age sword you know a one-handed sword rather than a long sword um, but I mean even if you're gonna have a long sword don't make it look like a blatant copy of Conan the Barbarian sword and Jon Snow's sword come on guys so I think we've established that one of the things contributing to my depression at the moment is ITV's Beowulf um, costume and particularly that sword, oh my god, vom. Um, but the other thing that's depressing me at the moment is I got really excited when I heard that the BBC was going to make The Last Kingdom based on Bernard Cornwall's books um, set during the Viking invasions of the mid-9th century. Um, and you know what, I have to be honest, 
I still will watch it and it still might be perfectly enjoyable. Um, I'm not so anal about this stuff that it stops me from watching them. I'll still give the shows a, you know, a chance and I, I enjoy watching Game of Thrones and, and you know stuff that's fantasy and I'm not a complete historical like blinkered I am willing to watch um, a story for the fact you know that it's a good story um, however there are some things that annoy me and one of them is um, what we see here okay so the last kingdom I had great hopes for it I like the ninth century as much as the next man and um, you know I think I've got a fair amount of knowledge about that historical period and I was quite excited to hear about them making something set during the Viking invasions and the series Vikings which as uh, my regular viewers will know I do enjoy um, the historical accuracy in that is pretty loose however they do have weapons and equipment that for the most part looks more or less right for that period. They're not using big two-handed swords, they're not using plate armour for the most part. Um, they, you know, they, they've kind of got the right level of technology. If we look at the poster here for The Last Kingdom, England is born! England wasn't born like this, I have to say. Uh, because what the frick is he holding? Is that another I'm not, I'm kind of reticent to call it a long sword. It's certainly got a long grip. It kind of, up till there, let's have a, let's have a look at this sword a little bit closer and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about it so you can see precisely what I'm talking about. So what we have here is something that up to the cross guard, including the cross guard, looks vaguely like a, a, you know, a Viking era sword, a sword of the 9th century. That's fine. It looks, I mean, we can only see a bit of the blade. The blade looks kind of the right shape. Um, it's got a fuller and it's fairly broad and it looks like it's probably parallel edged um, and the guard is a bit of an odd shape for that period but then what the hell is going on with that handle? The handle looks like it's been made by a child in the garden with a stick and some leather thong. Okay, why would, why would any professional warrior or nobleman have a grip to his sword that looks as crap as that? But secondly, why is it so freaking long? This is the 9th century. Long swords don't exist. People who use swords use one-handed sword. Everybody has a one-handed sword or a sax. And incidentally, this character in the books is known for using both a one-handed sword and a sax um, with a shield. Okay, if you're using a shield all the time, it doesn't make any sense having a longsword grip. Not to mention the fact that they didn't exist at this time. But then, what on earth is that stuck where the pommel should be? First of all, where's the pommel? I want to know who's stolen his pommel and why have they replaced it with a freaking great lump of amber? Seriously, like, what is that all about? It's one of the ugliest things I've seen. Well, since I saw the Beowulf sword, actually, but. This thing is pretty horrible. Uh, long grip, shouldn't be there, should be a one-handed sword, and it should have a pommel, not a lump of bloody amber. So I think we've established that I'm somewhat annoyed by the swords shown on uh, the stills from Beowulf from ITV and The Last Kingdom from the BBC. Um, and that's not where it stops, um, but I don't want to rant on for too long because um, you know, I don't want you to get bored and tune out. But the final thing I want to mention is that if you watch the trailer for The Last Kingdom, which you can see on YouTube or Vimeo or anywhere else, um, you'll see that the Anglo-Saxons mysteriously are using rectangular shields, as shown here. Um, you can just about see in that still. Why? It's not like only the Vikings had round shields and everyone else used some other special shape so that we can easily tell that, oh, those guys are Saxons because they have rectangular shields. No! It's just like, it just looks completely wrong for the period. Rectangular shields makes me think Romans, okay? Romans are the ones who famously used rectangular shields. So when you're making something set during the 9th century, why give Anglo-Saxons a shape of shield that's famously associated with an entirely different culture from a thousand years earlier. There we go guys, um, so I hope, I honestly hope that the ITV's Beowulf and um, BBC's Last Kingdom are really good, uh, but the swords and the shields I can tell are going to really freaking annoy me and if they really annoy me I can be pretty sure they're going to annoy a lot of my viewers out there. Thank you for watching, please subscribe and feel free to follow us on Facebook.